Hi, I'm an Australian living here in Belarus and what should be obvious to you is that if I'm an Australian and I'm living here, this obscure, unknown, shut off country, it's pretty obvious that I've been to a lot of interesting places, right, and lived in some very unusual places. This should be kind of obvious. Now, a part of doing this, of course, is to be very flexible in what you do and how you behave. In other words, I need to adjust to culture here, yeah? So little etiquette things, surface level etiquette things, I need to adhere to this, right? I can't expect Belarusians to do what Australians do, right? This is ridiculous. And I'm totally cool with this. And just some examples might be train etiquette. So on the train, you have to wait on the platform, wait for everyone to get off first, and then you get on. And truth be known, I love this. I think it's fantastic. Rather than a free-for-all, like he tend to get in Australia, everyone just kind of fighting it on and off at the same time. Um, and then also uh, on the train, if you're on the train and someone wants to get off and you can kind of see them in the corner of your eye, it's up to you to move. It's considered rude for them to ask you to say like, can you get out of my way, excuse me, right? You see them coming, you move, right? So little things like this, you kind of adjust and you do them. And I embrace this. I, I want to uh, show my appreciation, gratitude towards a culture allowing me to live here. Right? This is, I think, a very reasonable thing to do. However, there are deeper level things going on, right? This is just a really low level, easy to observe, easy to adhere to kind of rules I'm talking about. In reality, Australia and Belarus, Australia and Belarus are very different countries and very different cultures. And although, of course, Australia is a little bit European, obviously, in its cultures, in its etiquettes and so forth, and Belarus, <sighs> Look, people tend to throw in Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, maybe Moldova, if anyone's ever heard of that country. They'll throw those four in together and think they're kind of similar and maybe parts of Central Asia as well. Um, and look, there's some truth to that, but in reality, Belarus is probably the most European of that quartet, I would say. They have a lot more etiquette around politeness and civility, at least on the surface anyway, uh, here than those other Slavic countries. But it is still a Slavic country. You know, it's still fundamentally different uh, in terms of core mentalities as compared to Australia. There is one thing, however, that does kind of trigger me. Yeah, I'm not too easy to trigger, but this thing does kind of trigger me. And to be fair, over the last year or so, it's triggering me a lot less, but it's still there. And it's an interesting kind of core difference in the two cultures, Australia and Belarus. So let me give you a bit of background as to an element of Australian culture. Now you need to understand Australia's background. So our nation state was built off criminals, right? Britain, Great Britain was dumping criminals in this island in the middle of nowhere called Australia now. And most of our early population were therefore criminals or at least you know, the prison guards or screws or whatever that look after them, right? So not exactly a choice population. Indeed, my earliest ancestors in Australia uh, was a guy, my seven ex great grandfather, he was caught stealing shit in London, and then he was dumped in Australia, right? So our, our core of our culture comes from convicts, and then lots of working class migration. Yeah, lots of people from uh, different parts of the world, including Southern Europe. My grandfather was uh, a, an Italian guy. He was um, very much working class kind of guy from the village in Italy. And uh, here's another example. So you kind of got this, this constant convict and working class kind of mentality. Now, a part of this, well, I believe it to be linked, is what we call tall poppy syndrome. And what this is, is that we don't like seeing people succeed. Yeah, now this is changing, and it's not the same for everybody, obviously, but we have this theme that's kind of in there a little bit in the culture, right? And so what does this look like in, in real life? If you're doing really well, we might try and pull you down. If you're dressing too well, we might try and pull you down, you know? Um, practical day-to-day -day examples might be just friends teasing another friend for looking too good. Yeah? Now this isn't a golden rule, but it exists in Australia a little bit, and I don't think any other countries have this to the same degree that we do. I could be wrong, but we have it pretty bad, and like every Australian guy I bump into uh, while traveling, this is always a common topic. Um, this kind of tall poppy syndrome. A mate of mine in Australia has two cars. He has a Ford working class Ford Falcon, probably 20 years old, right? Maybe 15. But yeah, it, it's uh, had a decent innings, right? And then he's got a nice late model 
fancy BMW. Now he says to me, look, I don't drive that during peak hour. I don't drive the Beamer during peak hour because no one does you any favors in the traffic. No one lets you through, no one lets you in. No one does anything, right? <laughs> if you go on the Ford, people are much more likely to let you in in traffic. And on the cars, I remember my uncle, this is in the 90s when I was a kid, right? Uh, my uncle bought a BMW, which was kind of a pretty big thing in the 90s. Uh, now it's kind of more normal, I guess, but, and within two days, it had been keyed, right? So he was in a shopping center uh, in the west of Melbourne, which is known for being traditionally working class kind of area. Um, and someone keyed it. So it was a big line cut into it with a key on the side of his car, uh, of his brand new BMW, two days old BMW. Let me work out how to navigate all this traffic here. Um, so these are kind of typical. Now these are extreme examples, but they do happen, right? And again, things are changing in Australia, but we still have this. And it's kind of in all of us to some extent. I think it's in me, for sure, um, but not not crazy heaps, but it's there, right, it's there, and I can see it come out every now and then, and where it comes out in Belarus, is that in Belarus, image is really important here, yeah, image is important, how you look and how you present yourself is really, really important. I would go as far to say that for a lot of Belarus, especially here in Minsk, right, you go to the village, they don't care so much, yeah. Even the smaller cities, they don't care as much either, but certainly here in Minsk, I will say image that you project uh, in the culture is more important than what you really have. Yep. So it's better to look good, look rich, than it is to actually be rich. That would be my general interpretation of a lot of younger people in Minsk. So what does this mean, just practically, day to day, what does this mean for uh, what I might see here in Belarus. And this is not everybody. Like with Australia, tall poppy syndrome isn't everywhere, but it's a bit of a theme. And the image thing is a bit of a theme here as well. So let me give you an example. Uh, a few days ago, I was in a cafe with my Mexican friend Armando. Hello, Armando, if you're watching. And we were just working. Right? We were just on our laptops doing our thing. And it turned into kind of evening, it might have been six o'clock or so. We were just kind of chatting a bit and having a coffee and chit chat and chilling out kind of thing, doing some work. And this was on Mark Street. So Mark Street is known to have a series of very trendy cafes and very trendy restaurants. And uh, this taxi stopped, right? So we were kind of outside there. This taxi stopped and two girls got out and the girls were dressed just the best outfits you could get, right? This is like their, their, a, their a look. They look really perfect, made up perfectly, everything, every detail. And they had these bouquets of flowers with, God, I don't know how many flowers, a lot, like 100 flowers, maybe more, maybe 150. And I've seen this so many times that I know what was going to happen. Now they got, they went into the restaurant across the road from us, but I knew what was going to happen. They're going to spend the next two hours or so taking photos and posted them on Instagram. And this may well be, I mean, the flowers are probably rented, I guess, I don't know. Um, and what I've seen happen a lot here is the girls will sit down, take all the photos for quite some time, and then call for boxes and just put the food in boxes and just take it home. This is normal here, right? This is fine, it's the culture. Not everyone does it. But you see it enough to think, ah, oh, well, it's kind of a thing, yeah? And that's like the tip of the iceberg of it. Like most people won't do this, but it's actually kind of common. And this, when I first got here, this would trigger me. Like, this would trigger me so much. Now I don't care. Like, Nivajna, just do whatever you want, it's fine. But when I first got here, this is so against our culture. Like, if we saw someone do this in Australia, we'd be like, what are you doing? Like, they'd probably get called out and teased for it. Maybe, maybe. At least people would, like, talk amongst themselves, like, what are they doing? Are they just taking photos of themselves? <laughs> this would be, you know, possible in Australia. Whereas here, not so much. It's seen as a very normal um, thing to do. So this for me, again, at the start was a real culture clash. But now I don't care so much. I'm kind of used to it. And then what I notice is, and this kind of happens everywhere, is that foreigners tend to kind of gravitate towards each other. Like, I've got Belarusian friends, but I don't hang out with them very much. Like maybe once a month, once every two months, something like this, right? I mainly hang out with foreign friends. And I think that these core value things, like the one I've just described in this video, I think that we kind of underestimate these because everywhere you go in the world and where you see foreigners living there, 
they almost always find people from similar cultures to hang out with. It's really interesting. It just seems to happen everywhere. Now, some people integrate more than others. Some don't integrate at all. Like, there's just a, a wide variety there. But as a general rule, I think expats, or whatever foreigners we want to call us, tend to hang around with people that are more like us. For whatever reason it is, it's more comfortable. We know what to expect. Uh, obviously, even this language here is, is a big thing as well. You need one of the parties to be fluent in uh, the other one's mother tongue in order to be able to communicate properly. So a lot about what I spoke about in this video is kind of your Instagram image-based culture. And I do recognize that this is increasingly frequent and common around the world. And Australia's kind of the odd one out, actually. Even though Belarus is at the pointy end of doing this, it's more common here than probably most countries. But I see that most countries are gravitating that way. And actually, Australia is probably more the outlier uh, in this respect. Um, some more examples, look, Australians, we don't care that much about what we wear, you know, compared to Belarusians, like massive difference. Like Australians, we just don't really care that much. Like we do, but there's almost a coolness in acting like you don't care or looking like you don't care, right? So this kind of grungy, pretending you don't care kind of look, this is kind of can be cool. I'm talking about inner cities, obviously, inner cities of whatever, Melbourne and, and Sydney and some of the bigger cities in Australia. But yeah, as a general rule here, certainly in Minsk, in Minsk, again, it changes in the villages and smaller cities, but in Minsk here, I mean, presentation is just everything. I can see this, like everything. You must have everything perfect. All the clothes you see people wearing, they're always new. Yeah, unless the guy's like just random drunk dude, you know, walking around, kind of quasi homeless kind of guy. Apart from him, everyone else is just dressed immaculately, like perfectly. Like you just wouldn't see this in Australia. Some people do. Some regions of Australia have this more than others, but you know, if you're in the summer, in Australia, most people are just wearing flip-flops, shorts, and maybe a singlet or a tank top or some other kind of loose-fitting shirt. Like, there's not as much emphasis put on looking professional. Like, again, this is the averages, right? Don't have a tantrum. Australia's not like that. Belarus not like that. This is kind of averages and, and the themes, um, the average differences between the two cultures.